There isn't a future, there isn't a past, there's the road. I mean, this is going to be the most fun that you've had in your life. It's also going to be some of the worst times. I'm ecstatically apprehensive and nervous all at the same time. <laughs> There's a big unknown coming. You know, at this point, it's in the hands of the gods. You can't do any more preparation, so it's over to them. Let's get on with it. You start and you say like, oh my God, are we ready for, you know, can we do this? And did we bite off more than we could chew? But you can't go back anymore. It's just forward. It was barren, desolate, empty. The interesting part about it is that there was no green. Everything around you was shades of brown. But how do you think looks it looks and well at the meat? Cycling next to the Nile River today, very different than riding in the desert. I mean, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more to engage you everywhere. In going from Egypt to Sudan, what we saw were people who were so eager to welcome the world into their country and to feel that their Sudan could be known and be appreciated. Going through the Nubian desert, there's nothing. It's barren, it's desolate. Temperatures had soared to 45 degrees. We faced severe headwinds. I mean, we were really struggling for every pedal stroke. At the end of these tough days, I still felt, boy, I am so glad to be here. There were some really tough days in Sudan. The first massive challenge was going to be cycling 
through the Sahara Desert. Everybody was hit on those days in Sudan and really that was when we said Sudan finally showed its bite. Crossing the border to Ethiopia was, was special, leaving a little bit the Arabic world with Egypt and, and north of Sudan and having this feeling, hey, now I'm in Africa. Experiencing Ethiopia for the first time, we were all shocked how stunningly beautiful this country was. Everybody's mouth was watering. You can't see it in a car, you can't see it in a plane, you can't see it if you're walking like the, at the pace of the cycling is. It's a perfect way to see the transition of north to south. I was thinking when I was going to Nile God was, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. If it kills me, I'm going to do this day. Everybody knew that this was the big climb. Some place there was no, no, no tarmac. There was just gravel and so on, and it was hammering. When the climb started, I mean, it's an average of 7%. That's, uh, that was tough. That was tough. Get me to the top. The Blue Nile Gorge is going to go down for me as one of my epic climbs. The longest I've done in my life. cross over into Kenya. We left the mountains of Ethiopia behind and all of a sudden it was just this vast savanna-like territory. The complete contrast from Ethiopia into more red earth. It was just a, it's a completely different world, an, an older world in a way. I think we got into our stride a little bit by that point. So the challenges that Kenya threw at us, it felt like we were warmed up for those and we were able to be just a bit more comfortable through those challenges. You have the Maasai that all of a sudden start appearing, but it's quite the contrast. You're cycling along these pristine roads and yet you have this culture that's sort of been there for centuries. Coming down through the dry, dry north, hitting the sort of the greener pastures, stunning like acacia trees on the mountains, the Aberdares on the right, and then you've got Mount Kenya on the left.
riding into Tanzania. So everybody was looking for uh, Kilimanjaro. When you see that massive pizza, okay, you know, we're, we're getting there. The safari experience was really out of this world. Gorogoro ni pazuri sana. I don't have the words to describe it really. You can see in the eyes of the people, okay, this is beyond imagination, you know. There's holes everywhere, bombs, you need to be constantly focused and we had to fight just to, to, to go forward. It was a few days where I felt like throwing my bike into the bush. Oh man, brutal. Brutal. You don't think about the distance or the day, you just, you know, there's only the the next 10 meters ahead of us, just take two seconds, you might go over your handlebars. I did fall down once. There was too much sand, and there was more sand, and there was more sand, and the third bit of sand was too much for me. But I think that week, after seven straight days, everybody was tired. It was well, probably the toughest week so far that we've had. Could be worst. Could be worst. <laughs> Coming into Malawi out of Tanzania was absolutely amazing. We had this huge descent that just seemed to go on and on and on. Seeing Lake Malawi was a total surprise for me. I knew there was a lake, but I didn't realise it was so big. It was, it's vast. It's like, a, it's like an inland ocean. As we've gone down Africa, the number of cycles has increased. Malawi was another step up. It's a bicycle economy. I'm just amazed at how much weight people can carry on those bikes. They were tough days. They were not particularly long days in the end, but tiring because of the consistent up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. That sort of riding takes me to a level that I didn't know I had in me. I was exhausted by the time we finished, absolutely done.
always interesting to go to a different country because you know the moment you cross the border things are going to be different, even if things are really subtle and small. Transitioning from uh, Malawi to Zambia, it really felt like we were starting the reintegration process. The road changed completely from potholed and rough to silky smooth. It was beautiful with all these uh, views that we got from the rolling hills in the, in the Zambian highlands. With all the elephant grass, trees, the mountains in the background. In Zambia, the, the miles per stage jumped up. The stages were shorter in Ethiopia and Kenya, but the climbing was brutal. In Zambia, the kilometers went up, but the overall effort pretty much stayed the same, which is really tough. After the midpoint in the tour, it starts to get a bit hard. The body starts to fall apart, the bike starts to fall apart, the tent starts to fall apart. It, it was a real mental test. The other thing I really enjoyed was the bike donation. When you join up for a trip with TDA, your registration fee goes towards a charity that donates bikes all the way through Africa. You actually got to speak to the recipients, so to see how a bike can be given to someone and fundamentally change their life, that was pretty special. I, I was stunned the, the first moments when I stopped into the park and looked at the falls. It's, uh, it's, it's something that you really can't imagine. You, you cannot relay in a photo or words the, the sheer power of that water going over those falls. Hey Scott, Hello. this is about four and a half clicks down the road. There's two elephant bulls, one on each side of the road. Yep. Don't hang about, just keep cruising on. The Chobe National Park, it was kind of like National Geographic Live. I was just kind of blown away about how much we saw in such a little amount of time. Out of nowhere, they just appear. And, and that actually makes it more special because when they appear, they're like, oh my god. You're sitting on your cycle and there's nothing between you and the elephants. And we were just all in awe. It takes all your attention, but at the same time, it's very stimulating, and we're always kind of looking and oh, what did I see? One oh, look, and like, that's that's exciting. One or two elephants gave us like a real show, and like you know, water everywhere, and I was like, this was like quite something. In Botswana, we did the six centuries, so going 100 miles a day, six days, it's quite challenging. I'm not going to lie, I mean, there's times where I, I think everybody feels like, I, I don't know if I can make this day. But then having other people that are supporting you, it just makes it a lot easier to not just get through it, but to enjoy it. Going into the 208 day, 
think even the most experienced cyclists, they thought, well, this is gonna be, this can be a long, tough, grueling day. People really worked together to make sure that everyone would accomplish that challenge that day. And I know some riders could have gone faster, but they were committed to uh, help the group make it to the end. finished and it was kind of just in awe of the fact that I finished and people were so supportive as well when we finished just kind of cheering us like yeah you made it I know this is going to be one of those experiences where I'm going to look back on and be like I, I can't believe I actually did that I didn't know what to expect in Namibia, and uh, I felt I was on another planet. You just look around, you're in a desert, the colors are just amazing. So at one point, you just, you're on your bike and you say, wow, this is the best experience in my life. Riding on the dirt is a different animal. Rolling on gravel, you don't know from minute to minute. There's sections that are sandy where you can get bogged down. It touches your metal. On any given day, the tougher the road, the more you've overcome, the better you feel at the end of it. That's just the way we are. I've been doing some cycling for the last 25 years and that was probably the most difficult cycling experience I had. It's almost a lunar landscape. You just cross between the moon and Mars. You don't just get that anywhere. When we reach South Africa, so wow, this is already the last country, this is the last week, uh, this is the last stretch, and uh, we felt the emotion in, in the last stretch, basically. I think most of us were ready for it. That final stretch, we're thinking of where we came from, the pyramids on one end and then this. Kind of going through the, the emotion, wow, the, we complete this, we complete that, that trip. To me, I felt proud for everybody. So, 